Um, tomorrow's test, Friday's the test, you're going to have 15 questions, so you're going to need to work rather swiftly. You'll have one binomial coefficient, <clears throat> you'll have one Pascal's triangle where you have to expand. I will give you Pascal's. And then the rest will be probability and the fundamental counting principle. So when we look at this first question, it says how, how many different batting orders can a baseball coach create from 14 players when there's nine positions? Guys, think about these questions. It's not random. There is an order to this. It's called the batting order, right? There's one person that can bat first. There's one can that bat second. One can bat third. So what I would do, there's two different ways that I would look at this. I would either say, okay, there's nine spots. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? There's 14 players available for the first position. Then 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. You guys with me? And then what do you do to those numbers? Multiply. We multiply. And you guys get a big old number. I understand that. When you multiply this out, what do you get? 726 million, 485,760. You guys get that? Okay. There's another way that you could do this. Remember, we had two formulas, a permutation or a combination. In permutation, order matters, yes? So you could have done 14 permutate 9. The formula would look like this. I would do 14 factorial over 14 minus 9 factorial, which would give me 14 factorial over, what's 14 minus 9? 5. So 5 factorial. So when I would work this out, it'd be 14 times 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times what? 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 factorial. Why would I stop at 5 factorial? Because there's one on the bottom. And then what do you guys notice? What, 5 on top, 5 on the bottom. This is the exact same thing as this. Either way you work that out, guys, you can use the formula or you could just work it out using the spaces. You'll get the same answer. But when I say to you, I need you to show me work, this is the kind of work I need you to show me. If all you do is just give me this and then say, but I did it all in my calculator, that means nothing to me. You have to show me either what you put in the calculator or how you got it. Okay, Luca. All right, so sec the second question says, consider eight sprinters have qualified for a race. All right, a race. Some of you don't matter if you win or not. I matter. I care. I want to win. Does order matter when you're running a race? Yes. Yes. So there's eight people, and how many different places can they come in? First, second, or third? So you can either show me this. There's a possibility eight of those people could come in first. Then once someone comes in first, there's seven people left. Then six, right? Multiply them together, and you get 336. Or... Since order matters, we would use a permutation, and you guys would say there's eight people. Permutate, how many different places? Three, and then you'd work it out. It'd be eight factorial over eight minus five factorial, and then you continue to work it out, and I'd need to see that. Either way, it does not matter. <coughs> Questions? All right, when we look at these next two, Right, these were our distinguishable permutations. Deanna, remind me, what do I have to do when I have a distinguishable permutation and I have all these letters? You did it right yesterday. Oh. <laughs> I'll help you out. Number of letters, right, factorial, and then you divide it out by the repeated ones, right? Agreed? That's what you did. That's what you did yesterday. You showed me and you were good to go. So how many letters are there, guys? Seven. Seven. Make sure you guys count correctly, please. Very easy to make a mistake on these ones. Now, I have letters that repeat. How many times does L repeat? Two. So it's two factorial times what? Three factorial. Three factorial. Three factorial. Because A repeats. Good. So when you work this out, I need to see this. 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times... I'm going to stop at 3 factorial. And then on the bottom, I have 2 times 1 times 3 factorial. 3's will cancel out. 2 goes into 2 once. 2 goes into 4 how many times? 2. 2 times. 
What's seven times six times five times two? 420. 420. Um, a little thing that a friend of mine taught me years ago. Some of these problems can get messy. <clears throat> so when you have, at the end, once you've crossed stuff out, just circle what you have left to multiply. Very easily, you guys could have forgotten that too. You could have written it so small that it got <clears throat> caught up in the stuff that you crossed out. Just circle what's left over so you have plenty of time to, or not plenty of time, I don't know why I said that. So you have, you know, the, the ability to see what you're looking at. Again, same thing here. How many letters are on top? Seven, eight, yep, 10 factorial. Now there's a lot that repeat. I see P, how many times? Two times. Two. I see D, how many times? Two times, and then E will be four times. Perfect. So it looks something like this. Now 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. I'm going to stop at 4 factorial. So on the bottom, I have 2 times. I don't have to say 1. You guys know it's 1. Then I have 3 times 2, right? And then I have 4 factorial. So four factorials cancel out. You can multiply the top, multiply the bottom, and then divide them. <clears throat> I like to cross cancel. So I'm going to say 2 goes into 10 five times. I'm going to say 3 goes into 9 three times. And I'm going to say 2 goes into 8 four times. If you cross cancel different numbers, that's OK. But again, here it might be a good idea to just circle the ones that are left over so you can see exactly what you need to multiply. What would you guys get on this one? Twelve thousand six hundred. That's what I got. Good. Twelve thousand six hundred. Does anybody have any questions so far? All right. I have a license plate. This is where you guys have to really pay attention to numbers, digits, and letters can repeat or they cannot. I was very specific on the test for every question that it could go either way. I either told you something can repeat, something cannot. So just make sure you pay attention to that. But it says in a certain state, each standard automobile license plate consists of three letters. So I'm going to write out three blanks, followed by a five-digit number. So one, two, three, four, five. How many different plates can be made? Does it say that the letters and or numbers cannot repeat? Yes or no? No, it doesn't. That means you can use anything all the time. So we need to know how many letters are in the alphabet. 26. Okay, that's something you guys need to know. I'm not telling you that. How many letters are still in the alphabet? How many letters are still in the alphabet? If it said to you that the letters could not repeat, what would it look like? 26, 25, 24. Good, Brooke. Now when we talk about digits, guys, the digits are 0 through 9. How many digits are there if it's 0 through 9? 10. Now how many digits are there still? 10. How many digits are there still? Then what? Then what? Good. If it said the digits could not repeat, it would be 10, 9, 8, 7, right? So now we just multiply this and we get a huge ginormous number and that's okay. What'd we get? 1, 7, 5, 7, 6, 0, 0. Zero, 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 zero. It's a lot of license plates, huh? Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> All right, now we're talking about a zip code. United States, 1963. Okay, great, great, great. A zip code consists of five digit sequence of numbers. Five digits. Find the number of zip codes consisting of five digits. Are the digits allowed to repeat? It doesn't say they can, but you just assume that if they don't say they can't. On your test, I was very specific, yes or no. So how many digits are there, one through zero through nine? Ten. And then how many? 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 Ten. We multiply all those together, and we get what? 100,000. Very good. Um, all right, the next B says find the number of zip codes consisting five digits. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. And they tell you something about the second digit. Is there any stipulation about the first digit? No. no, so there could be 10 of them. Is there any stipulation about three, four, or five? No. So it's 10, 10, 10. What is the stipulation about the second digit? It has to be what or what? 
One or a nine. How many possibilities is that if it's either one or nine? Two. Perfect. Two. Perfect. So you would just multiply. But, 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 but. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good question. If it says that it has to be this or that, that's why there's two. But if it said it can't be one or nine, then it would be eight. You're right. So we multiply this together. We get 20,000. Agreed? Okay, good. <laughs> Same type question, but now it's an ATM pin, so it's four digits. Does it say anything about the digits? Can they, is there any stipulations like it can be this, can't be this, that sort of thing? No. So it's just 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, which gives you 4,000? Yeah. 4, Why did I say 4,000? And then you guys go along with me. It's 10,000. Silly Miss Meadows. All right, find the total number of ATM codes when the fourth digit is not zero. Here's a question, just like you were just talking about, bud. There's a stipulation on this one. Hang on one second. Sure, 10, if you guys wanted to write 10 to the fourth power, that's fine as well. Just as long as you show me somehow that you got 10,000, that's fine. So there's no rules on the first three digits. They can all be anything, zero through nine. What is the rule for the last digit? It's not a zero. So if I take zero out of the possibilities, how many possibilities are left? Nine. So what does that give me? Uh, nine. Perfect. Good job, guys. Very good job. When we get to questions like this, when they talk to you guys about a lot of times you'll see questions like this that have to do with picking courses in college. Picking um, lunch choices. Putting pizza combinations on. It says a college student is preparing a course schedule for next semester. The student must select four math courses, one of four science courses, and two courses from the social sciences. How many combinations are possible? If you guys have a choice of, and they, in the curriculum guide, there's not that you have to take one before the other, but let's just say you have like art, photography, and dance. Does it matter if you take dance, then art, then photography? Or photography, then it doesn't matter. When you're just compiling a list of, of stuff, po possible combinations for a schedule, all you do is multiply the choices together. So I have four different math choices. You can write four math. And then what else do I have? I have four science choices. And I have two social studies humanities. And all we do is multiply those together. So I have 4 times 4 times 2, which gives me there's 32 different possibilities for my schedule. Does that make sense? Yes. Good. <clears throat> All right, look at the next one. A customer can choose four amplifiers, one of nine stereo receivers, and one of 10 speaker models for their entertainment system. You're just getting a combination of the things to make a stereo system. So there's four different kinds of amps you can choose from. There's nine different receivers you can choose from. And there's 10 different speakers you can choose from. You're just making your own little combination for your sound system. So you just multiply those numbers together. What do you get? 360. So where they just give you a bunch of categories and choices, you just multiply those choices together. <clears throat> you good? Yes. Okay. Next kind, you guys will see, definitely on your test, it'll be something about how to answer a test question, whether it be multiple choice, true, false, something like that. But it says, how many ways can a 14 question true or false exam be answered? All right, so think about this. You have 14, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. They say, assume no questions are omitted. What does the word omitted mean? Oh, like left blank. Left blank. You're going to answer them all. Well, how many possibilities do you have for the first question if it's a true-false test? There's two different possibilities. Does that affect your second? Are there On the second question, how many possibilities are there? Two. On the third question, how many? Two. All of these are twos, guys. What's another way I could write this? Two to the 14th. Two to the 14th power. Good. When you multiply 2 to the 14th power, what do we get? Uh, 16,384. Perfect. Good. Good job. All right. 
In a physiology class, a student must dissect three different specimens. You got to do three. Doesn't matter which three, you just got to do three. So you have six earthworms to choose one. Ugh. Then you have seven frogs. No, thank you. And you have one of three pigs. I would not be taking this class. <clears throat> Gotta have one from each category. It does not matter the combination that you do it. So that means we take each group, multiply them together, and we get how many different combinations? 126. 126. You could also use the combination formula, guys. It does not matter. What's up? Because it doesn't matter. Like, does it matter what order you answer the question? Some of you go through your test and you look and you say, okay, I'm going to do number three first, then I'm going to do eight. Then I'm gonna, it, the order doesn't matter. It doesn't say you have to start at one and end at 14. So it doesn't matter what order you do it in. All right, guys, for the probability of marbles and decks of cards, I will give you that deck of card demo, um, visual that I put on Canvas. I put it on the test. Those of you in here, you'll have it as well. So you guys can reference it. But <clears throat> when they ask about neither or both, okay, think about this. The first thing that's really important is it says without replacement. So I want, in this experiment, I want both red marbles. So I'm going to put that over the total. All right. So when I do this, how many total marbles are in this example? Six. Okay. So there's six total. And how many of them are red? Three. Three. All right. So I'm reaching in the bag. I'm grabbing a marble. I want, I want it to be red. So I assume that it's red when I look at it. <coughs> I throw it away because I don't put it back in. So, but I reach my hand in again. I, go, I re get one out and I get one again. So I'm going to multiply. Since I reached in and grabbed a red marble and I put it over here, how many are left in the bag? Two. Good. And then oh, what's the total number that's five. left in the bag? Five. And we multiply. We get six over 30, which reduces to? One-fifth. One-fifth. Very good. If it said a red and a green, the total red goes on top, the total green goes on top, and since it's not replaced, the denominator changes. But since you want them both the same color, that's why the numerator changes as well. Same uh, concept for the bottom one. What's up? All right, when we talk about neither marble being yellow, you don't want a yellow. So you want everything that's not yellow. So how many total marbles are in this bag? Okay, 10. How many of them are not yellow? Seven. Okay. So I reach in the bag, I get one that's not yellow, and I reach in again, so I'm multiplying. Now guys, <clears throat> I got a marble when I reached in that was not yellow, and I put it over here to the side. I did not put it back in the bag. So how many marbles are left in the bag now? Nine. Nine, good. And the one that I got was not yellow, so how many not yellows are left in the bag now? Six. Six, good. And then we multiply. You get 42 over 90. Do yeah. I leave it like that? You have to simplify. Simplify. Right? Always simplify. So 7 out of 15. When the, re without replacement, your denominator always changes. When you want the same outcome twice, like we wanted two reds, or we wanted both not yellow, that's why the numerator decreased as well. But if it was this one and this one, a red and a blue, then you just take the total number of reds and the total numbers of blues. The only reason that decreased was because of that. All right, now again, for the card ones, I'm gonna give you the deck of cards so you can see it. But this just says find the probability of selecting one card from a standard deck. That just means out of 52. How many face cards are there? 12. Reduce that. <clears throat> What's up? Yep. All right, probability that the card is black. Well, how many cards are in the deck? 52. 52. Just a little common knowledge, guys. Half of a deck of cards are black. So how many is that? 26. 26. Good. And we reduce that and it becomes what? One half. Perfect. One half. 
All right, now this one's a little trickier. <clears throat> Yesterday we had some people get stumped on it because you're just not thinking. That's why I'm going to give you the visual so you guys can see it. But it's the probability that it's a numbered card 2 through 12. So there's still 52 cards in the deck. So think about this. The numbered card is a 2, a 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, right? A lot of you told me it was 9 <clears throat> out of 52. Why is that not right? Because there's four sets of those. Correct. There's four twos. There's four threes. There's four fours. There's four five. There's four of all these cards because there's four suits. So what is nine times four? 36. 36. 36 of the 52 cards have a two, a three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten. So when I reduce that, what does that become? Nine over 13. Over 13. Say it again. Nine over 13? Yeah. That you guys got? You agree with me in here? The biggest thing I can say to you on a question like this is to read what the question is asking. This is a very simple question, but you have to read it. It says, use the table below, right? A student from the class randomly chosen for, chosen for a project. What's the probability that the student is the given age younger than 22? So think about what you want. You want younger than 22 over the total. This is a good way to show work, guys. All right. How many total people are in this class? 30. Okay. I am not going to give you guys partial credit if you get the total wrong. Your whole problem is wrong because you just didn't add correctly. That's just you guys not being careful. You have calculators. We, that's silly. Don't do that. Now I want somebody that's younger than 22. So what categories, what age categories am I looking at? 18 to 19 and 20 to 21. 18 to 19 and 20 to 21. So what's those two numbers added together? What is 36. good? And then can I simplify that? You can divide both of those by three. What do you get? 12 over 13. <clears throat> okay. All right, now back to some lovely face card stuff. This is where you either have a mutually exclusive or overlapping issue. Now, again, I'm giving you the deck of cards template so you can see it. So you should be able to get these without any problem. But you want to find a face card or a black card. So it's the probability of a face card. How many face cards are in the deck? 12 out of 52, okay. Or means to add, so or a black card. <clears throat> How many black cards are in the deck? 26. 26. But there's six black face cards. Okay, hang on one second. I'm gonna stop this for one second and switch to show you. You have to subtract what overlaps. And like you guys just said, there are six cards that are black and also have a face on it you will be able to have access to that deck of cards thing. So just make sure you guys have that. So it's 12 plus 26 minus six. You guys get 32 over 52? Yes, all right, so then that reduces to eight, eight over, 13. over 13, perfect, good. That's an overlapping. You have to subtract the stuff that overlaps. It's an overlapping event. All right, this next question says the probability of a heart or a diamond. Well, let's look back at our chart, hang on. There are no cards in a deck that have a heart and a diamond. So how many hearts are there? There's 13 out of what, 20, I'm sorry, 13 out of 52? Yeah. Plus, how many diamonds are there? 13 out of 52. It is not an overlapping event. This is mutually exclusive. They have nothing to do with one another. So you would say 26 out of 52, which gives you what? Half. Perfecto. Good job. And a question that we just did <clears throat> a second ago. It's what you want over the total. So we want someone 18 to 21, right? How many total people are in this group that we're looking at? 30, and how many of them are between the ages of 18 and 21? 
26. 26. And what do I do with this fraction? Simplify it. What does it become? 13 over 15? 13 over 15. There we go. Yeah. All right, I look at this question. It says you can answer any 16 questions from a total of 20. Does it tell you you have to answer the first 16? No, it's telling you you got 20 questions. You choose which 16 you want to answer. Is this a combination or a permutation? Combination. Combination. You choose however many you want to answer. Olivia asked a second ago, how do you know which number goes where? The bigger number goes first. So it's 20, and you get to choose 16 of them. So our formula looks like this, 20 factorial over, anybody remember? It's n minus r, so 20 minus 16 factorial times 16 factorial. So I have 20 factorial over 4 factorial, 16 factorial. <clears throat> 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 times 16. I'm going to stop there. Why? Because I have a 16 factorial on the bottom. Then I have 4 times 3 times 2, right? So my 16 factorials cancel. Now we can cross cancel. 4 goes into 20 5 times. 3 goes into 18 6 times. I can say 2 goes into 6 3 times, right? So I have 5 times 19 times 3 times 17. What would you guys get? <clears throat> 4,845. Perfect. So I look like at this next question, in how many different ways can a jury be selected? Does it matter? They're not saying how they're going to sit down. But if I'm just trying to get a group of people to be on a jury, does it matter if before I pick, I say, okay, I want Jason, Maddie, and Vicky? Or I say, I want Maddie, Vicky, Jason. Right? It doesn't matter. You're just choosing the jury. You're not seeing where they're sitting or anything like that. You're choosing the jury. It doesn't matter if someone's picked first or second or third. It's just you're getting a group of people together. So I have 30 people to choose from, and I have to choose 12 of them. So my formula would be 30 factorial, 30 minus 12 factorial times 12 factorial. It's n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial. That's your combination. Permutation doesn't have that second r in the bottom. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so we're going to write out. Let's look at the top here. I have 30 times 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, and 18 factorial. I'm going to stop at because we have an 18 factorial on the bottom. And then we also have a 12, <clears throat> excuse me, factorial. So I have 12 times uh, 11 times 10 times 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Now, you guys will probably, if you try and do this in your calculator, it's going to tell you overflow error. So this is why we need to start cross canceling. So we'll cross cancel, or we'll cancel out our 18 factorials. And then we can say that 12 goes into 12 one time, and 12 goes into 24 twice. So 11 goes into 11 one time, and it goes into 22 two times. 10 goes into 10 once. 10 goes into 20 twice. Um, 9 goes into 9 one time, and 9 goes into 27 three times. Let's see, 8. <clears throat> Well, 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8, so 8 and 8 can cancel out there. 7 goes into 7 one time, 7 goes into 28 four times. We can say 6 goes into 30 
five times. We can say four goes into four once, five goes into five once, five goes into 25 five times. Three goes into three once, three goes into 21 seven times. And I think that's it. <clears throat> now let's circle the mess that we've made. So I have five times 29 times three times 26 times five times 23 times seven times 19 divided by two. And when you do all of that in your calculator, you get 86,493,225. But right there, guys, is how you show your work. You gotta be real organized. It can get super messy in a hurry, so we gotta be careful. Um, the second, this next one, shouldn't say second, but the next one that we look at we are talking about, <clears throat> they ask, what are the possible combinations, All right? There's 10 openings. That's important, but we don't use that in our formula. There's 15 paralegals with two years experience, and then there's 22 paralegals with one year experience. So there's two different combinations. It says right here, how many combinations of six paralegals with two? So they're, they're telling you, you have 15 total, you want to choose six of them. And the second one would be you have 22 total that have one year experience and you want to choose four of them. It's this one and this one, so we're going to multiply. So we can use our formula. We have 15 factorial over 15 minus 6 factorial times 6 factorial times 22 factorial over 22 minus 4 factorial times 4 factorial, and we're just simplifying here. <clears throat> so 15 minus 6 is going to give me 9. So we have 15 factorial over 9 factorial times 6 factorial times 22 minus 4 is 18. So you have 22 factorial over 18 factorial, 4 factorial. Now, <coughs> just stay organized, guys, and write this out. So you have 15, 14. 13, 12, 11, 10. I'm going to stop at 9 factorial because I have 1 on the bottom. And they're going to cancel out. Then I have my 6, 5, 4, 3, and 2. So we're going to just do our cross-canceling stuff. 6 goes into 6 one time. 6 goes into 12 twice. 5 goes into 5 one time. 5 goes into 15 three times. 4 goes into 14, we can say this is 2, this will become 7. Now these 2's will cancel out here. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 10 5 times. So we have 3 times 7 times 13 times 5 times 11 divided by 3. And in your calculator you get 5,005. Now over here we're going to do the same thing. Just simplify and then we're going to multiply. <clears throat> so we have 22 times 21 times 20, 19. I'm going to stop at 18 factorial because I have one on the bottom. And then I have 4 times 3 times 2. So 18 factorials cancel out. 2 goes into 2 one time, 2 goes into 20 10 times. 3 goes into 3 one time, 3 goes into 21 7 times. 4 divided by 2 is 2, 22 divided by 2 is 11. So you have 11 times 7 times 10 times 19 divided by 2. And you get 7,315. And then we're going to multiply those two together and you get 36,611,575. All right, so these next questions, guys, are you they're not as difficult as they appear. Um, I like to set up a proportion to do these. Um, some people don't. But if you set up a proportion that involves percentages, it's always a percentage is out of 100. So if you, it says estimate the number of unemployed, worker, unemployed workers in the 25 to 44 age group, that's 39%. So 39% out of a total of 100% of people are unemployed. So if you set up a proportion and want to know what number <clears throat> of those people is 39%, you would say X over the total, which is 
11.46 million. We're just going to cross multiply. And when we do that in our calculator, when you cross multiply, you get 100x equals, you get 446.94, divide both sides by 100, and x is 4.4694. The question says to round to two decimal places, so it's about 4.47 million people. All right. And if it says B, estimate the number <coughs> number of unemployed workers who are 25 years or older. So I have to look at my categories and I say, okay, 25 or older, that's going to be this group, this group, and this group. So you have to add them all together. So our percentages that we add together would be 39 plus 29 plus 3 out of 100. So it's 71% of the population. And again, if you want to know the real number to that, you would say 71% <clears throat> out of 100. That's x over 11.46 million. Cross multiply, you get 100x equals 8.13, sorry, I divided already, 813.66, divide by 100, and that gives you 8.1366 million. They say to round to two decimal places, so that would be eight, about 8.14 million people. All right. All right, so these next questions are really as easy as they, as they look. It says, what's the probability that a person selected at random from the population of unemployed workers is in the 16 to 19 category? So remember, probability can be written three ways, a percentage, a fraction, or a decimal. So in the 16 to 19 category, it's 12%. All right, that's the same as 12 out of 100. Right? That's the same as 0.12. Or if you simplified that fraction, you could say, uh, I'll divide by what, 4? 3 out of 25, just depending on what they're asking. asking what's the, what's probability the probability that the, that the person, person selected, selected is, is between 20, 20 to 64 years? years? Well, when we look at the table, or the pie chart, whatever, 20 to 64, so it would be 17... 39 and 29. So 17 plus 29 plus 39, and that's out of 100. That gives us 85 over 100, which is the same as 85% or 0.85. And as a simplified fraction, if we divide top and bottom. Okay, so here we're looking about the probability <clears throat> that the person is 45 or older. So that's going to be our 29% and our 3%. So we're going to have 29 plus 3 over 100, which gives us 32 out of 100, which as a percentage is 32%, which as a decimal is 0.32. And a simplified fraction, if I divide the numerator and the denominator by 4, I get 8 over 25. <clears throat> so guys, that's it. You're going to have 13 questions from fundamental counting principle and probability. You're going to have one calculating the binomial coefficient. Binomial coefficient. And remember that's when the numbers are stacked on top of each other. It's n over r. There's not a division sign. n over r. So our formula would be n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial. And then one with our friend Pascal, we're going to have to expand, and Pascal's triangle will be given to you, will be given. I'm giving you the triangle. I'm also going to give you the deck of cards PDF, so you guys can reference that. Um, I really ask that you could be at school tomorrow, either in person or on Zoom, to take the test. We don't have a million makeups. But... I wish you guys best of luck, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.